Hey and welcome to Homo Set Tool Bag Render video. Let's get into it. I will here click file here and import models. Let's take our gun that we export in the last video into Homo Set Tool Bag. If you check the setting properly, you would have our default uh, text uh, materials here already loaded in. So first thing first. I'm gonna choose some other light, like the gray cathedral here. Same light source as we choose in Blender. With that, let's load in our texture. Map as a tool back uh, default. Normal orientation is also OpenGL. So, so we should have no problem importing in here. But if we do, click flip Y axis here. If you have a direct X, the um, uh, normal maps. Let's load it in. It's the low one here. So I have loaded in low one normals. And let's check the edge. So this edge here is color is correct. But if you see it like this, you can see the bevel looking really sharp. That means your normals have been flipped. Let's see we are we back our normal correctly in OpenGL. Our normal should be showing up correct like this. I'll load in the albedo color. Be sure to check this color here. It's usually not 100% white. If that is the case, track it all the way up here. So that it not uh, altered your diffuse color. At for reflectivity, I would choose metalness, and let's load in the metallic map. And for the microsurface, let's load in the roughness, and click inverse. Since this is a uh, thing of our input as a gloss map, but our input is actually a rough ma roughness map. So let's hit invert. Finally, let's add in the occlusion map. That should be all the input we need to do. Let's check in. Let's click uh, the gear icon here and check the color space here. As I said in Blender, only the Albedo map should have this check. Let's check on all the other map. Make sure it's not it's it unchecked like this. It's correct. Correct. Here, the, the metalness map here. It shouldn't be have the card is checker like this. Let's uncheck that. And hit OK to see what changes it make to our gun. Just some slight uh, different. Make it look a little bit better. I'll uncheck this as well. Now let's go and work on this second group. I will just quickly add in this map. Let me just double check the render the setting. All should be good. And now let's check the gear. Yeah. And the color here. Drag it all the way up. For the glass, let's duplicate this low too. Maybe get rid of this. And drag this into the glass. I'll name this low to grass. Bumble set to back uh, class, it's actually a little bit better than EV. So let's focus on this pressure meter here for the moment. I'll add in a transparency. And let's try uh, to and let's try some option. This is dealer. Cut out. 
does, does not seem all that great to me. Add. Add is the same, uh, the same option as in EV. You will learn at the end uh, of the, this render tutorial that the best class shader is in Sketchfab. Real time uh, and render engine usually handle class very poorly. That's include all the gaming engine. If you pay close attention, class usually look very bad in uh, real time rendering in general. But the best render real time render band for the class definitely is Sketchfab, as you will learn in the last video. Let's try now adjust some of this setting. I believe we need to do some other adjustment first for our class to show up. So let's just do that. Now, in Marmoset Toolbag, you can quickly add in like source by clicking on the sky here and identify the like source. Click on it, and it will generate the like source underneath your cursor here. So let's click it until we have efficient enough lighting. And then move on to adjust the quality setting, which will be in the render setting here. I will choose high DPI. That is good. I check the local reflection here. That will increase the quality in uh, our reflection. High res shadow. And ambient occlusion. And adjust it a little bit. Now for the magical setting, the global illumination setting here. Right off the bat, you can see it adding some very far more fine reflection to our gun over here and over here. So I will increase the detail to for X and the voxel to high. That will really increase the depth the resolution of the global illumination here. So that is the voxel of the global illumination. That should increase our render setting by quite a bit. As you can see the metal here, it's catching some very very nice reflection from the environment. Let's go back to our class here. We need to get rid of our metalness for our, our reflection here to work properly. So let's get rid of that. And I will adjust the index of reflection here. Move the call take. So the scope here looks pretty cool. Except for this class here, which look kinda wrong. Which bring it back to my point that generally speaking, class uh, rendering is very limited in real time rendering. I believe this is the best cl class that we can get out of Moxet 2 back. It worked over here, but, but not much over here. Let's see these two uh, links. Let's say we cannot do anything, anything much more. So you can either use this or sacrifice this to check this by increasing the index of reflection here. Which will make this one cooler, but it will render this one pretty much useless. But that is the limit of real time render. It's okay. You can always bump this up to render in this angle and for this angle, reduce down to this. Usually in game engine, they have a some some dedicated technical artist to make sure the class in the game looks fine. Plus out for our render. This should be good enough. 
you can see the HDRI bring out our texture here, very nice. But we can always go to experiment with some more skylight. Say this one. Let's try to add in some like source. I tap on a couple of possible like source here. You don't, if you don't add in any like uh, spotlight here, the HDRI will not cast any shadows. Which is not that good. Uh, no, you know. And if you do add in a couple of like, you will have some very nice reflections such as this. Just a couple more settings to go through. And we'll be run this and then we'll be ready to go. And that is the camera here. We can do a lot of fun with this one. Say we can turn on the depth view. Just the focus distance. Focus on the outcome. Maybe add in some blur. Like so. Just a bit to have it focus on the gun. Sharpen it a little bit, maybe. Nothing too crazy. Slight bloom. Maybe a little vignette. If you want to pick your render to look like a taken picture, add in some chromatic aberration and distortion. That would make your render look like a taken picture. And if you want to simulate a real eye, I would recommend turn this down. So some students should make it look much more convincing. And as I said, the color mapping is very fun to play with. But be color be must be um, cautious not to break your render over it. You can see our pressure meter showing is showing up very nicely here. And if you were to put this gun in a in an FPS game, it would look somewhat like this. I turn off the depth field for now, so you can better see. Yeah, like this. And our bullet is sitting here, nice and clean. I will turn on the depth field again, and we're done. You can capture the, the render by clicking this capture button here and hit the image. It uh, set tool back will save uh, your image for you. So you can show it up online. And if you want uh, your viewer to know that you render this in set tool back, you can use the watermark here. The watermark here will not destroy your image at uh, any point. It will actually give your image more context. That is it render in real time. So, thank you for watching this video.